Neil and I were both at boarding school, and we wanted to start by letting you know that things have changed between the time that perhaps some of you were there and we were there, and now. Uh, so, for example, I, I was at a girls' school first and then went to a co-educational school in the sixth form. One of the things I remember very well from the early days was the long queue of boarders on a Sunday evening outside the solitary phone box waiting to ring our parents, whereas, of course, now you've got instant access, which ne not necessarily a good thing, actually, but um, it is a lot nicer to have, have such great communication with your parents these days. Um, we did have some slightly odd spinsters looking after us. They were clearly somehow or other socially maladjusted. I don't know why. I think they saw us as a bit of an inconvenience. Uh, and didn't really want to have very much to do with us. So really, the girls, we brought our, each other up, I suppose, in our boarding houses. Some of the teachers in those days could charitably be called completely bonkers. Um, and I must say that, that most of those kinds of teachers have been edged out one way or another uh, in, in recent years. And the system in many of the houses was really divorced from reality. The boys ran the houses, the housemaster was very little in evidence. Um, and it was very much like a sort of uh, Lord of the Flies scenario. So these days, boarding is a much kinder, more professional environment, as we'll explain later, despite the occasional headline which newspapers seem to seize upon. You know, if something does go wrong, it, it does tend to hit, hit the headlines, uh, particularly from the big name schools. But it really is an extremely lovely environment to grow up in these days. Yeah. Well, the good news is uh, it, w it wasn't all bad in, in the old days, and the baby has not gone out with the bathwater. Uh, I was hugely happy uh, uh, when I was at a, a boarding school. Uh, when I went to work in a, a boarding school, uh, I discovered that an awful lot of things were still intact. Uh, one of the most important things that young people can learn in, in a boarding school uh, is about the importance of teamwork. Uh, and we live in a world where now we realise that is something which is absolutely crucial. These schools have always done a great deal outside the curriculum. Uh, and that is, again, vastly important. Um, it, it's the sport, art, music, drama, more of these things are, 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 and on, uh, which teach you incredibly important lessons. Um, I think in, in the, the day and age that we, we live in now, the importance of memory, focus, getting on with people, anticipating situations, reading what's going on. In a boarding situation, you develop good social antennae, uh, and that's a, a, a great gift for, for later on in, in, in life. And boarding school life has always been a bit complicated. A juggling act is required uh, by young people. Uh, and again, that's something which is no bad lesson to learn uh, in, in life. Multitasking, uh, anticipating what's going to be happening, uh, and really thinking hard about what's going on around you. So how has boarding changed, though, um, since those days? I mean, as I've already mentioned, largely for the better, one of the things that's come in are pretty strict rules uh, have been imposed on us. Um, there, there are schools inspectors who come in and make sure that those rules have been properly implemented. Um, so to make sure that the boarding environment is incredibly professional and very safe for the children. The resident boarding staff are often, usually I would say, members of the teaching staff who can provide wise advice and compassionate emotional support as well as some extremely handy help with homework of their particular subject area. They're led by a head of boarding who's been specially trained up to make sure that every house is, is, is well uh, looked after and is reaching those minimum standards. The housemasters and mistresses are trained up as well before they go in to run their house. There's a fantastic course run by the Boarding Schools Association um, which goes through all kinds of scenarios and you know this is sort of ongoing through your time as well um, to help you understand how best to support your students throughout. And there'll be at least one member of the boarding house community with excellent medical training as well which is updated every three years. So you can see there is extremely good professional um, support from, from the house staff within every boarding house. Yeah. It's the boarding house which provides the anchorage. Um, they're all roughly, very roughly, around 60-ish or something like that, 12 in a year group, maybe slightly more, maybe slightly less. Uh, and that breaks everything down in, in, into manageable units. 
uh, and that the, the structure within a, a boarding house uh, is something which the young appreciate hugely. A housemaster, a housemistress, who will be ultimately res responsible for everything. In the past, of course, lots of children were sent to boarding schools, either because it was a tradition within the family that all children went to boarding school without question, or perhaps because their parents lived overseas and there were no good schools for them to access. Um, for many children and many parents, this caused distress and you know, possibly some emotional damage too. These days, there are good schools everywhere. You don't have to send your children away, but for the right child at the right time, it can, the benefits are absolutely huge. The right age really depends on your child and your family dynamic. Some ch children will absolutely cheerfully go off at the age of seven to a prep school and have the most marvelous time. A lot of them are ready at 13 when, of course, adolescence creates that sort of distance and difficulty within the families. You might not believe it now, those of you with younger children, that you absolutely dote on, but when your child's in year nine, you may all be hugely grateful that the nagging about homework, getting up in the mornings, tidying the room, is left to the house staff, and you can do all the nice stuff when they come back at the weekends and in the holidays. Boarding really can, I've seen it and I know, reduce uh, the pressure points between you and your children at that really sort of delicate, difficult age. If you as parents will be utterly miserable without your children, then perhaps you'd better think again about boarding. Nearly everyone, in my, my, opin my opinion, my experience, is ready to go at 16, though. That can be a great option. It can provide a brilliant stepping stone between home and university, uh, allowing your child to develop the sorts of skills that we'll be talking about and independence and so on that they need at university in a very secure, supportive and safe environment. Because of the, the, the intense experience of being a, in, a, in a boarding house uh, where they don't leave. Uh, and the, the, the relationships which are formed uh, with, with the house parents can be so strong that it becomes a sort of friendship which lasts for life. Uh, and that's one of the, the great things. And people don't leave, they keep on coming back. And when they come back, we put them to work so the next generation can begin so, uh, to, to, to learn what's going on in the world out, outside. So it, it, it's, there are all sorts of channels of communication uh, that, that, are, that are open. Many of the most important lessons will take place not in the classroom, but round the kitchen table, uh, where they pile in an, in an evening for social with, 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 with goodies. They'll all be chatting about sport and cracking silly jokes outside. Somebody will momentarily mention uh, something about the latest development in astrophysics because they've been to a lecture, or the origins of romantic poetry. It won't last long. Um, because they'll be back to the silly jokes and talking about sport, but they're the threads of conversations which you then pick up, uh, maybe on an outdoor activity expedition or walking back from a match. And those are the conversations which young people remember, and there is no uh, examination specification mentioned. That is real education, which the bureaucratic world of examination boards go straight over their head. Uh, and that is, that's why uh, working in a boarding school can be such an, a hugely enjoyable I experience. Because there's time to get them to realise that everything is important. All knowledge can be useful and it's all connected. Uh, and so those conversations that, that you have in the informal world of a boarding house are of inestimable value. So, uh, and it gets back to what I was talking about earlier on, about focus, teamwork, memory, conversation. Those are the things that boarding schools can do, which day schools can do, can do well, but they do not have the same amount of time. And it's as simple as that. So the other thing is that pe people often talk about the development of your character within boarding. Now, how does that come about? I think that comes about partly, of course, b because of the teachers that you interact with, but also because of the students that you find yourself with and the stuff that you have to do with those students. So you're sharing a lot with the people around you, with the 60-odd um, girls or boys that are in your house with you. You've got to negotiate what you're going to watch on the television in your free time, for example. You're all doing kitchen duty together once a term or twice a term for a week and working out who's going to unload the dishwasher, who's going to wipe down the surfaces. You know, don't shirk your duty, get involved. Uh, you need to, of course, uh, look after the younger students as well when you're a sixth form pupil and help 
them, perhaps with their homework, if you're a, a you know, whiz kid at maths or physics, um, or you know, with their emotional problems, whatever, you can talk to them, you can help them settle in, um, and, and that's a great leadership skill that you're developing there. You're really becoming part of a community. Things happen within your community. You might be uh, having a dinner that you're all cooking and, and organizing, a charity event, uh, you know, a house party, that sort of thing. There are lots of opportunities for organizing and leadership within those. Boarding pupils in their adult lives very often are easy to get along with. They're just easy people, um, very flexible and responsive. With diversity in boarding comes a wonderful network of friends from across the world, of course, which can be a huge advantage in this sort of increasingly mobile workplace. You're disappearing off to Singapore or Hong Kong, and you will find people there who are at your school if you're in a boarding school. You'll immediately have a wonderful social network to slot into, people to help you find your feet in that place. And of course, uh, the advantage of holiday opportunities can't be underplayed either when you've got mates across the world. Um, one of the superb things about this show is that you, it, as you wander around, you'll see that there are many different sorts of boarding. Uh, and that is, that is a, a, a really good thing to appreciate. At uh, one end, there's full boarding. That's not going to suit everybody, but in full boarding, you get all the advantages in full measure. Now, it's not going to be right for everybody, but that is something which can be absolutely fantastic. And as I mentioned earlier, parents are very much part of, of the full boarding world. They can come and visit whenever they like, uh, and they're not hermetically sealed places. Of course, people go home for, for, for weekends, etc. But the co-curricular world carries on full tilt at the, at, at the weekends, and the young love it. Anyway, that's one sort of boarding. Um, yes, uh, we, have, we have flexible boarding at our school where you can go out any weekend that you want or stay in any weekend that you want. But another sort of, another, uh, I suppose, advantage of a boarding school is the idea of being a day pupil within a boarding community. If you've got a boarding school near you, a good boarding school near you, there can be huge benefits to being a day pupil at this, that school as well. You'll benefit for the longer days, the wider range of activities taking, taking place, Often there are speakers' programs in the evenings which parents and pupils can take advantage of or access to sports facilities um, and, of course, as I've described, international friends for your children. They might be able to stay for supper in school, do their homework in school or leave earlier. You know, there's great flexibility that comes from being a day student within a boarding community. A a any school which is serious about boarding uh, will think, you know, is this child going to be right for boarding? Do, do they sense that this child really wants to come? And if there's any doubt, well, then they shouldn't come. Uh, and that, that's, that's something that you need to test the water with, with, with schools. Um, it's got to feel right from all parties. Um, of course, when everybody starts in a big new institution, it can be a, like diving into a cold swimming pool to begin with. But they're kept busy, and that's the really important thing. You need to ask questions ab about you know, how, how, do schools, how do boarding houses cope with people uh, who ha have, have, have homesickness. Uh, of course, that's a really important thing. But there will be lots and lots of people that will be there to look after. Uh, the, the young people who are, are, are feeling a bit fragile. Uh, the, the housemaster, housemistress will be busy coordinating accidental conversations where people will bump into the person who, who's be feeling a bit fragile and, and, and chivvy them along. Uh, and there's a whole network which you know, focuses on, 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 a, on a child who is finding it a bit, bit difficult. <laughs> it's, it, it, but it, it's, it's, the good, it's a good question. I mean, it's, it's something which we focus on all the time. I think there is one kind of student that one can identify and hopefully identify before the admissions process, but if you fail to identify that, that's when the problem hits. And that's the problem, that's the, the, the pupil rather, who is being sent away against their will. And that's why we put a big emphasis on this. If the child's excited and looking forward to it, and if the parents are comfortable to let them go, it will almost always be absolutely fine. But listen to your children, I think that's the main thing. Is Sometimes, I think, particularly in prep schools, yeah, you would get you, do, you don't tend to get it in, in secondary schools uh, uh, really at all. But sometimes in, in prep schools, you'll have people, they're, they're great um, environments for, you know, 18 to 20 year olds, particularly they'll come and do sport, support sport, won't they, often mm. in these schools. Um, what they're doing is they're living and working in the boarding house, but there will be somebody on site 
who's responsible and, and trained and uh, in charge. So if something were to happen, if they were at all uneasy, they would immediately be going to the housemaster, the housemaster's wife, and, and working it out from that point of view. In prep schools, it can be wonderful because, of course, the age gap is less and the children love having those. You know, they see them as real heroes and role models. So I think it can work absolutely beautifully. But yeah, they will be managed within the house by a senior, a senior adult. You can tell an awful lot very quickly uh, going round a school by seeing whether the children are, are smiling. If they're downcast and miserable, uh, then you know, you, uh, alarm bells ring. But that is, 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 the, is the most Im, Im, important thing. Uh, and if you're thinking about a boarding house in, 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 a, in a school, if you're focusing in a bit further, uh, and you ask you know, a child which house is the best, they'll always say their own. So the question to ask is, if you weren't in your house, which house would you be in? But if you ask several children, they'll all give you different answers. Of course, what, I totally agree with Neil. The most important thing is that the children are happy. But there are lots of different kinds of, of boarding schools as well. There are some very academic ones. There are some less academic ones. There are some which focus on creative arts, some which are very sporty. So know your child, get advice from your child's teachers, um, and that will really help you to focus on the kind of school which will support your particular child's um, sort of character and nature and foster who they are. You get inspected and you get inspected with no uh, time. They just will swoop in and come right. and demand to see, they want to see all of your paperwork, all of your records, every paracetamol that's given out to any child is noted down, the time, the date, what's been given to them, what the problem was. There is a huge amount of record keeping. It's all monitored and if you're found to be lacking, in a mild way, you might be rebuked and have to put it right for the next time. But if it's a big lapse, you know, you're, you could be shut down, yeah. potentially. Uh, losing yeah. your, your, your licence, your Tier 4 licence, as it's called, uh, is, 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 a, is a threat that's out there. It's very real. Um, uh, and schools are very sharp about making sure that the international uh, students are, are, are looked after and that all protocols are, are, are observed. Uh, it, it's often very, very difficult to tell who lives where in, 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 in the boarding school. And again, it goes back to you know, modern communications. Um, sometimes you can know parents better who live you know, 8,000, 10,000 miles away than people who live very, very locally. Some parents uh, won't be particularly interested in looking around boarding houses uh, because they think, oh, they're, they're all the same, and we'll who can one tell? At that point, the st school starts to get very suspicious uh, because the actual act of going round to look at them is so important. At our school, we, we, I find quite often that people will, um, a little bit like buying a house, they will feel very strongly physically that this house, oh, I feel I'd be comfortable in there or that house. In the end, though, I'm the one that makes the decisions because I want to make sure that every house has got a good spread of nationalities, a good spread of international borders, a good number of scholars, so it's really well mixed. Um, and as Neil said, sometimes they don't get the house that they chose. In the end, they always say, I love my house.